Namaste and thank you for pressing play. Welcome to our video. We trust that you've had a delightful Christmas season so far. We certainly have at the Magdalene Centre. It's been very peaceful, I'll say, and um, illuminating. I love that word, illuminating. Thank you to everyone that's liked our videos and sent us the most amazingly wonderful, encouraging messages. We really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. We're going to start this week with the astrology. I have to say that I have this very optimistic energy that <laughs> sort of sweeping around me at the minute. So we hope this goes well today. Let us start with the astrology for the week. The 30th of December. Mercury squares Chiron. A challenge to recognize how a wound to the sense of self-identity affects our confidence in our thoughts and our words. And conversely, how the choice of our words, and especially the words that we utter after the phrase I am, and how that can affect our sense of self-identity in a way that either destroys or heals us. God was asked, who shall I say that you are? And our father's response was, tell them I am that I am. In Hebrew, you would write I am that I am, just like that. Yod, hey, that hey, I am that I am. This is the letters that make up I am that I am, which as we understand is technically the name of God. Some people pronounce it as I will be what I will be. Personally, that gives me the feeling of something in the future. I will be something. No, you are, I am. Okay, I am that I am. Yes, some people interpret it, interpret it as I will be what I will be for me. I am that I am. How you pronounce it is Yahweh or Yahweh. I am that I am. You know why? Well, how can our Father take any specific form? Because if he took a specific form, he would then be limited to no greater than that form. You see, so if God was literally made in the image of man, God would be limited to the limitations of the human body. You see, so the mind, wow. Your mind is so powerful, they're trying to collect it, you see. Mm -hmm. They're trying to collect the way you think. They're trying to recreate consciousness, you see. Consciousness is the collective of all of our minds working together. So if they can control your mind, the more people's minds they can control, well then, the greater they have control over the collective consciousness, which is the greater mind. So there is a war on for your mind, you see. And it starts with I am, Yahweh, I am that I am, which is I am everything, all possibilities, <laughs> not limited to this form or that form, no. The words you utter after the words I am define you. Not only do they define you, it also tells everything and everyone. It's like the universe, God, all the angels and every human being on this planet then conspires. Consciously 
or subconsciously to give to you whatever it is you are. I'll give you an example. You may come across someone who is constantly stating, I am broke, which means they don't have enough money. They feel they are lacking in financial resources. I am broke, I am broke, I am broke. Well, if I had a friend like that, well, firstly, my friends wouldn't be talking like that. But say they were new to our friendship circle, so they hadn't really learned. I would introduce them. I would say, oh, here's my friend. I am broke. The words that come after I am far supersede your name given at birth. Everything then conspires to bring you that. So by constantly stating I am broke or I am sick, how many things do you say after I am that bring you that curse? You're cursing yourself, man. When people ask me how I am, I say I am blessed, I am good. Because then everything's going to conspire to bring it and make it so. So ask yourself, each time now, January is very important, we're going to go through the J for January, very important, and the I am is very important. Now let's go back to the beginning. Your words, they spells. Okay. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. So there's this, there's this counter, it's not a counterplay, there's this synergy between sound and light. Okay, people assume light is the highest form of spiritual power. Okay, well in order for light to be, God had to speak. So we know God does not, he's not uh, French or English or German or uh, New Zealand or uh, Maui or, it, it, no, God speaks in a language of light and sound, not in a language of alphabet. So God said, let there be light. In order for light to be, God had to speak. Okay, so sound, vibration. So your words are the creative power of God. Yes, you co-create. We'll talk about that in a minute. So excited. So excited. This excites me. This is just so amazing. You are a child of God, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay? Everything's designed to bring you back into your Eden, back to oneness. Because you were born into the duality. You know, you became a slave to that duality. And you've been fighting the voice in your head ever since to get back to this place of peace and tranquility and I am, I am. Who are you? Be careful what you say after the words I am, because it will happen. So this week, we are dealing with that. This week, people are making New Year's resolutions, because what's happened? Well, I told you a few months ago, you're going to go through a major, major, major death and rebirth. So now you, you, you're coming up. You're coming up. You, you, we're no more trying to keep our head above water, okay? We, we understand, right? And we're now at that place where we're deciding, mm, no, I don't want this in my life, I don't want that in my life. No one's making New Year's resolutions to take more drugs. No one's take, making New Year's resolutions to add any more stones onto their weight. No one's really making any New Year's resolutions to do anything other than better themselves or improve themselves or to get rid of ideas, thoughts, habits, or ways of being that really aren't good for them. You know, no one's really making New Year's resolutions to, you know, wreck themselves, really. You know, you're making New Year's resolutions to improve yourself. And why? Well, because we've gone through this whole process and, you've, and you're starting to reevaluate yourself, to check yourself, to say, what am I going to do to improve my life? Some people are. They're saying it's everyone else's fault, but that's fine. Never mind. Right, I'll just finish this aspect and I'll jump onto the J for January. On the same day, 30th of December, Mercury trying Uranus retrograde, an opportunity to transform the rational mind through connecting with the spiritual mind and uniting logic and reason with intuition and vision. 
in a way that allows us to perceive a higher vision of what we can achieve for yourself, your heaven on earth, and identify practical ways to implement it, to turn it, turn the vision into reality. Okay, so you're about to be given the tool. So say you had this, I had this idea. It says I've decided I'm going to start a garden service. You know what I mean? Already, with me, I always go for where the pitfalls are first. You know what I mean? So I've now made this decision. I'm going to start this business in conjunction with everything else because you know what I mean? I love to work. And... But it takes some planning. You have to have ideas. Where am I going to start? You know, how is it going to work? So this is a time when those, those new ideas are formulating. And, you know, you have to clear out stuff to make space for these new ideas, these new opportunities. And you're thinking about how you're going to implement it, what's most practical, and, and how you're going to basically work through it. You're making the plan. You're planning. You see, you're planning right now. And then practical, you need to, to, to take practical steps we co-create this idea that you're going to sit and wear a, a a hole in your prayer rug from your knees there's actually a condition called what is it called technically someone mentioned it it was hilarious prayer's knee or something where people get these like achy knees or like these knee problems because they spent so much time on their knees praying. Nothing wrong with praying ceaselessly, please by all means do. However, God's going to give you some information on how you're going to help yourself. Okay, this praying, waiting for some leprechaun to turn up at your door with the solution all wrapped up. You know, you're stepping out of your problem into, that's a false economy. You're deluding yourself. You are co-creator. Yes, God gives you the ideas. Yes, you have a problem. Yeah, you be still. You ask, how am I going to fix this? Okay, you be still and wait. God will give you the solution. And then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to implement that using your hands. So this is a week where we're going to be, you know, Figuring it all out and getting the information on how we're going to practically start to make these changes, these New Year's resolutions. Okay, now January starts with a J, 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 which is the tenth letter of the English alphabet and also the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is pronounced Yod or Yod. Yod, hey, vav, hey, yod. The main influence of yod is in work. Work, yes. Yod means hand. And the symbol itself has been described as a finger pointing heavenward. With your hands, man is able to work. And fashion things, make things. Yeshua was a carpenter. He made things. He fashioned things. Carp, enter. Carp's a fish. It's a type of koi. Fish is always used to describe esoteric teaching. So maybe we all need to enter the esoteric teaching hmm? to be like Jesus. Yes. Yod refers to the hands of God, originating all that there is. God, oh, where's my thing? I have to use this. I had a perfect one. Obviously not so perfect, otherwise I'd be in the video. But this will be an interesting one. Okay, circle. We're going back to the circle, yes? The circle is the shape. Because remember back in the... Back in the Huen Huens, when there was no such thing as alphabets and things like that, uh, people used to communicate with simple shapes. You see, so the circle, or zero. God, symbolized by the circle, creates man and his world. You see, that's your world. 
in your little circle. Manth comes from the center of zero. You see, you're in the center. You, you believe you're the center of your universe. <laughs> you're in the center of the universe that God has created for you. He's created you and he's fashioned your world. But within that, you have free will to turn that world into a version of heaven or to a version of hell, depending on... The words that you speak, it starts with your words, but you're not saying words if you're not, they're not coming from some thought, the voice in your head that sometimes lies to you, very often lies to you. Remember the lying voice is loud. The truth voice is soft and gentle. God creates you. God is the circle. You're in the center of the circle. You're the center of your universe by God's ordination. Man comes from the center of the circle. Now, ten, you have the one and the circle. So that is man standing next to God. Man, you, you co-create with God. Thoughts, then you speak it, first process, then you fashion it. God. You create using the tools that God gave you, which is your hands. With his hands, man fashions his own lesser creations through diligence and work. And just as the number one is in all the numbers, you cannot get to eight without starting at one. So basically eight is one, 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 equal eight. So all numbers are just one, repeated however many times. As is the yod. You see, the yod is in all letters. Just as the one is in all numbers, <clears throat> yod is a portion of the creative light force of God that exists within all of God's creation. All of God's creation. Crystal. Since J is the tenth letter of the English alphabet, it's a 10. So 10 is back to 1 with a 0. All right, so what it's basically saying is we're back to the beginning, but with a higher level of understanding. That's why you're making New Year's resolutions. You've gone this year, I messed up here, 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 or this happened, blah, 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 blah. So I'm definitely not doing that again. Once bitten, twice shot. You know the saying. Okay, so you've decided I'm not doing any of this. All right, this is moving, that's going, I'm making this choice, this is happening, and this is how we're going to move forward. So you're back to the beginning but with a higher level of understanding. You have become a better version of yourself through your crucifixion process, you see. The Easter story, the Easter story, the good news. Each year we have that opportunity to be a better version of ourselves, closer to who we really are, the true I am. The number 10 means it has been here before and now has new parts to explore. Now, Yod corresponds with the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. Because Yod is the hand that works to create, it is representative of honest labour. We are all entitled to earn. However, to desire what someone else has worked for is a form of self-condemnation. So when it says do not covet, it is telling you for your own good because you condemn yourself because the person who has, has worked for it. They have co-created that with God. 
and now you're coveting it. You're condemning yourself. Desist. The good we do is a positive force that returns our good to us. While evil, being the opposite, opposing or opposite side, continually destroys itself. J. Welcome to January. We'll do another video, 2020. How much is going on there? Well, we've got... So that's 40. 20 plus 20 is 40, so we've got 40 going on. We take the zeros out, we've got 22. We add the 2 and the 2, we've got 4. So we've got 40, we've got 22, and we've got 4. All those energies are going to interspersed. Now interesting, this was a three year. Uh, a lot of people will do the three work now in the fourth year because they're lagging behind a little bit, isn't it? A lot of us now who are done the three work are in the four and we're doing the four. You know? Four's, a, four's about, well firstly 22 is a, a master number, yes. 11, 22. Not last year, but the year before was an 11 year. Okay, it's an above year. Mm -hmm. 22 is a below year. Okay, so that means that we get an opportunity to create in the tangible. People talk about the spiritual things, it's all in the airy, furry, in the air. No, 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 no. no. It's about... Everything that we have created in the spiritual now becomes physically manifest if you put the work in, in tangible 3D reality. So if you've been manifesting a new house, you've been working on a new house, you'll get your new house. Your fourth year. Exactly when in the fourth year? Well, I don't know your life. At that time, and you can sort out. But... It's about the conscious manifestation, but it's also about hard work. It's about the work and the persistence. It's just that you'll be giving the information so that you're not working on things that are not good for you or that are not useful for you. But if you cannot perceive and discern the spirits, perhaps you're being set to work for a system that's there to destroy you because you don't know any better. January the 2nd, Mercury conjunct Jupiter in Capricorn, an opportunity to expand the rational mind to a point where both the big picture and the fine details can be seen working hand in hand, allowing us to perceive the oneness behind apparent duality and communicate with one another in a spirit of oneness. Spiritual oneness basically means without judgment, without ego, just two souls, two children of God. I had the most amazing interaction coming from the shop last evening, I think. Yes. I bumped into a father and a son. They were from Africa. And the young lad just had such hope and passion for his future and we spoke for a bit about the differences of life in Africa and here in the UK and the lad was just so excited about the opportunities he had and he has here. And I looked at this young man and I thought, there's our future, man. There's our future. Wow. The children are our future. We have to move from the judgment. And you see, you can't move from judgment unless you stop judging yourself. You can't give what you don't have.
If we maintain judgment, you're never going to move to oneness. You're never going to be able to experience walking with God in that real way. Father, I need... My car keys have disappeared. This is an actual example. Like they vanished. I mean, they just vanished. We had people hunting for them. They, I mean, they, there was no stone unturned. These keys vanished. And the Holy Spirit was laughing at him and saying, and the very next day, as if by magic, the keys appeared. Because a necessary delay was required. Yes. The finder of the keys needed to be back. Friday the 3rd. Mars enters Sagittarius, an opportunity to focus on our actions and desires, on the search for meaning and seeking to understand who we really are by looking within to understand our higher spiritual nature. Through pursuing self-understanding, our actions are then guided by wisdom leading to right action. Right action. We live in a duality, which means at any precise moment you have a decision, you have a you have a choice to go one way or the other. Being the perfect person, the righteous person, means at every moment you choose the right course of action for yourself. Right, what have we got this week? Ooh, 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 ooh. How many? Five. Number of men. I came out earlier, so that's a definite one. There's four. Okay. All right, what have we got? We've got the queen. That's feminine energy, that's wisdom. Fertility, okay? All the ladies wanting to get pregnant, this is a good opportunity. Go for it, go for it, go for it. All right, under the spotlight this week is going to be sexuality in all its forms. It's going to be friendships, uh, fertility. So what that means, any new projects, any seeds that you've planted, this is going to be some information, things coming to add some fertility to that, to add some, let me say compost in some respects or to add the creative force. Think about this. You can have everything present for a baby. You can have a womb. You can have an egg, womb, an egg. You can have a sperm that does not ensure conception. You can provide all of those things will not ensure conception. Conception is a gift from God. So that fertility, that spark from the divine to give the seeds you've been planting the life. Okay, also friendships. Female. Okay, so whenever I get this card, um, I like to advise, because it's also a four, it's number four there, you see, four. Wisdom. Use your wisdom. Uh, if you have a look at this astrology, it's all to do with the mindset. It's a lot of ego. So we're going to see a lot of ego. This is what I'm saying. Okay, these. this is this. This is what's going on. But in your life, what you're going to see is people playing up. Like last week, one of the aspects was um, the eclipse. And I said, well, it's not a one-day thing. It's going to run for a period of time. And I checked with Paul, the eclipse window ends on the 10th of January. So this aspect of the past colliding with the future is going to be happening. So that's what this week is very much happening, the past colliding with the future. What does that mean? It could mean that you um, ended a relationship, but you know the, the, the person you ended the relationship just kind of popped their head up whilst your future is just about to walk through the, the door, you see. 
or it could be that you know you, you you're having memories of things that happened in the past and you're deciding to make peace with it so that you don't carry it as a burden into your future it could be you did something some time ago and you thought you got away with it and then boom shakalak ooh, ooh, you know which is interesting that I should say that because High Priestess, you know, whenever she appears, you know, things that have been hidden are about to be revealed. If she's upside down, it means you're deluding yourself, but she was right where you from. All of this, the past colliding with the future, what was going to run, all of this to getting you out of who you were and back into, and, and, and to who you are now, the real you, in January, the start of a new season. It's all marvellous, isn't it? Okay, so ladies, if you're having difficulties, cleave to your female friends this week. Loyalty, right, it's all because this is what we want. We are all trying to figure out who's sincere in our lives, who's loyal, and who is giving us unconditional love. This card says, if you want loyalty, you have to be loyal. You have to have all of these qualities. You have to give them to yourself. If you... You cannot respect anyone if you have no self-respect because you have, you have no context for what it is. If you're not loyal to yourself, how can you give loyalty? Because you have no context for what loyalty is. If you've never eaten a piece of chocolate and someone says to you, how does a piece of chocolate taste? You'll be like, I don't know, I've never eaten it. So this week, we're having a chat, we're checking ourselves, we're looking at our relationships, we're going, who am I? Some of us are uttering curses on ourselves. I'm sick, I'm broke, I'm all of the rest of it. I can't do it. I'm too fat, I'm too... Uh. Stop cursing yourself, people, really. God helps those who help themselves. It's about hard work. So we're going to have some issues relating to loyalty. All right, why? Because we need to bring certain things into justice balance. Okay, and this is alchemy. So that gift under the Christmas tree that I mentioned, which I had some most amazing... Someone came and told me the most wonderful thing that happened to them on Christmas. I mean, on Christmas Day, wow. So beautiful. And they said, you know, I know what you mean when you say it's by grace, and it is by grace. You can you can work, you can do all the work, you can you can you can wear a hole in your prayer rug. But it is by grace, man. Because God knows your heart. God knows your heart. Anyway so those situations that have been out of balance are going to come into balance and there's going to be some alchemy, which is the actual chemical process that changes your mind. Like, it's an actual process. It's an actual process. So we're going to have a lot of let's move. So we see the light um, and bringing some balance and justice. Now, in order for that to happen, we're going to have another one. I'll just end on here. That's ridiculous. Things that are hidden. You know, there's information you may need to know. Right, this is saying don't go look for it. Going and looking for it is the absolute opposite of what you should be doing. You should be sitting and saying, teach me the truth no matter the cost. Show me the truth no matter the cost, because then it comes to you. You don't even have to get out of your robe or your slippers. You don't have to go stalk it. It comes. All right. So the high priestess is about discernment. It's about discerning the spirits as well, because right now, the deceiver wants to sneer you up. He knows you've just been rejuvenated. You're just feeling the spirit. You're feeling really spiritual right now. You're feeling, you're feeling like... I can do this, you know what I mean, I, 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 this, this happened to me this year, but you know what, I'm not going to let it get me down, I'm going to do this, 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 and you, you're feeling that optimism, it's a new year, you want to get rid of old stuff, you don't want to take it into the new year, so the deceiver wants to just keep you snared, man, keep you trapped and limited to just uh, the people problems, unconditionally love yourself and stop cursing yourself, okay, prophecy vision, okay, so we're going to have some some of us might have some like really crazy dreams, prophetic dreams, some visions. I suggest those empaths amongst us get into nature this week. Your central nervous system might be off the scale. I've had a lot of people saying that they're feeling anxiety for no apparent reason. Well, it's a collective anxiety. Okay, so the only thing to help an empath get their anxiety under control, which is basically you have a, your central nervous system gets thrown right out of balance. So you have to ground that out. The most powerfully effective way of doing that is to go and get into nature. Nature balances all, all um, classical music because there's so many different layers of music going on at the same time. It it calms the brain. Okay, but with the empath, it's 
it's not just the brain, it's your central nervous system. You can feel the energy, you're picking the energy up, and you, the only problem is your brain is not interpreting that it's not your stuff. It's this, it's that, and you just think it's me, I'm panicking, let me fall over. All right, no, no, no. Let's get into nature. Let's go do some digging. I need some help. I need, I need, I've got a pond today. Come on, help me dig a pond. Um, and that's going to balance and stabilize your central nervous system because the movement is coming. I really want another card. Can I have another? Movement. Okay, moving you to where? Moving you into your heaven and earth, my friends. Moving you into your heaven and earth. Well, I'm going to have one more. Moving you into your heaven and earth. Let's get a conclusion. Let's get a happy new year. I don't want to know. No, you won't give me one? <laughs> me too. Cool. <laughs> Movement. Yeah? Movement to what? Your total transformation. You see, a butterfly doesn't start life as a butterfly, doesn't it? It starts as a caterpillar. Not very attractive, a bit pricky. I got prick. I got impaled by a caterpillar once when I was very young. It wasn't very pleasant. Um, my gran bought some bread and she wiped it with some bread and that got all the little stingies out. But anyway, the first after movement comes Lady of the Lake. Lady of the Lake is about taking absolute responsibility for yourself. You see, the amount of freedom you have is directly proportionate to the amount of responsibility you take. And, the amount, and responsibility starts with your thoughts. Yes. Then your words. Then your actions. Because if you can get those three right, you can achieve your heaven on earth. All right, you can transform from that consuming but, uh, caterpillar into the butterfly. But what you've got to realize, my friends, is that process, the alchemical process of transformation is uncomfortable. And in order to achieve the alchemical process, you have to take absolute responsibility for yourself. Truth, courage. Courage, yes. It takes a lot of courage to be who you really are, while the whole world wants you to be something else. Absolute truth. Courage, self-respect, and responsibility. That's the energy of the Lady of the Lake. This is the energy that the Holy Spirit is asking you. Hey man, come on. You create with our Father. You're the center of the circle. God made you and everything in your circle. Take some responsibility. If you can do it this week, come on, come on. I'll tell you everything that's hidden, everything you need to know will come. All right? You take responsibility with that information. I'll provide the alchemical process. The planets keep moving. Nothing's going to stop that. Love yourself enough. Love yourself enough. Female energy is about wisdom. Yes, knowledge is wonderful. You have to have knowledge. Knowledge is power. But knowledge without wisdom and understanding is dangerous. Patriarchal. We need wisdom, which is the feminine energy. The two together make a third thing, the little baby. The baby of knowledge and wisdom is understanding. Because God wants you to transform from what you think you are, a human being, creating either hell or heaven for yourself on earth, because you are creating it for yourself. Really, you are. Into that butterfly. But understand that process, you know, when the when the when the caterpillar decides like to stop consuming, it wraps itself into a cocoon, a pupa, basically. It wraps itself in itself. And then it eats itself from the inside. It just eats itself. It eats itself. Complete surrender. It eats itself. It eats anything it thinks it is. Complete surrender. And then at some point, it kind of wakes up. And it goes, oh, I don't feel comfortable in here. This doesn't feel good. I need to get out of here. Ooh, ooh. And then it has to struggle to get out of its shell. It's a pupa. You see, that's like you getting rid of all your false masks. You know, that's you pushing. This is you, your beautiful butterfly, trying to get out of that who you think you are. Then it struggles. If the butterfly doesn't struggle to get out of the pupa, out of the cocoon, it won't be able to fly. Its wings won't be strong enough. You see? That's why you have to force your way out by yourself. Come on. You can do it. Right? And you force your way out. 
The struggle itself is what makes your wings strong. So we're at that, sta that, that stage where we are reforming and we're like, this isn't cool, I don't feel comfortable here. Oh, this is restrictive. Let me, let me push, let me push. How can you start your life as a creeping, crawling creature? Transform into that flying creature. Come on, you can do it. Thank you, Father, for this most wonderful, beautiful reading. Bless us all, Father. Teach us the truth no matter the cost. Show us the truth no matter the cost. Peace be with each and every one of you. Namaste.